guys, welcome to this video. Thanks so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you have not seen these videos before, welcome. And welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. My um, intention today with this video is to go into a little bit of flow and also just do a little uh, brief energy update on what I've been seeing, feeling, hearing, experiencing, expressing and just kind of share that with you guys. Um, some of the biggest messages I've been getting from my team are follow the call and let it go. And that can be a little challenging at times. I'll start off with that and then I'll go into flow. I've been doing a lot of writing and then reading to you guys what I've written. And so it's a very different style than being in flow. So I write, which I'm kind of right now calling it Soma, Somatic writing, like automatic writing, somatic combination, because what I do is I essentially tap into my own resource through source, through connecting as a node or a synapse in the heart brain of the universe. And I just share what comes through me. I'm aware of what I'm sharing as I'm sharing it. And therefore it becomes for me an inter interaction and a bridge between those realities. I'm not a trance channeler per se. Um, and I like it that way. It's fun for me. It brings up questions that I have as I write. Um, and then the other way that I do it is just by speaking. And a lot of times I'll have already recorded it and then written it down. So it's many different styles and formats. The reason I'm sharing that is oftentimes I can get caught up in, I need to share this, I need to post this. This is important information for someone. And while that is always kind of there in the background of one of the reasons why I do what I do, on the flip side, what my guidance team always shares and expresses with me is let it go. There's this concept that I've been noticing a lot more frequently, not only with people that I'm working with, but just witnessing in others, especially in our lightworker community, if we wanna label it as such. And it's this idea that we're on a mission and we have to fulfill that mission. And what I was shown is this think of a bubble and everything I talk about and refer to has to do with bubbles. But think of it as a bubble within a bubble within a bubble. And all of us are in our own little bubbles. So my mission, mission, if I want to call it that, and I'm being called to actually share that word a little bit. So I will. And I'm also being called to talk about what it means and looks like to be called. <laughs> oh boy, so many things. So essentially when we're looking at our mission, right? A lot of times if we go to work for a corporation, let me turn this light down just a little bit. Um, we have this mission statement at work. This is my mission. But what I've been shown time and time again is if we're really following our mission, it just happens organically. What I'm shown is that sometimes having an idea or concept of what that mission is can give us a sense of purpose, right? It gives us a sense of moving, moving forward. And that mission sometimes is the call. But I wanted to share from another perspective, they're two different things. Yet at the same time, they're the same thing. Because when we're following the call or when we're following our mission, we're just in flow and they become one. It no longer becomes, I have to do this or I must do this. We're just automatically doing it. And as we're automatically doing it because we're following our inner guidance, we're following the call from within. It feels good now to eat this. These are words that I'm hearing right now that feel good. And I do this a lot. I'll say my guidance is saying, my guides are telling me, um, and I'm hearing this because this is my habit. This is my patterns. This is what I've done and what I continue to do on and off. But it becomes more of I'm hearing or I'm sensing or I'm feeling. And that is all part of embodiment, by the way from one perspective, and it just becomes more as a flow. This is, I'm just sharing this through all of the senses that I'm utilizing. 
And my mission then becomes less of, I have to talk about this. I have to teach things in this way. I am a star seed, right? I am from this particular planetary existence at this timeline. And I came here specifically to unravel, et cetera, et cetera. It becomes from my perspective, more of a merge. We begin to merge more with our own hue network human um and i'm hearing counterpart because all of those different aspects are counterparts of us yet they are all part of what makes us whole and complete therefore that line of separation of my guides my guidance team becomes less of a separation and it becomes just more of our own interaction that we are then expressing in an outward formation or in formation, expressing itself outwardly or drawing it in through us. So we become a walking, living, breathing channel. And I'm being called, so I use these words a lot because of habit and they help others sometimes to understand, well, what does that look like? What does, what does that mean? And it's not that when I'm sharing this information, I'm hearing voices or I'm hearing somebody tell me to do something. That's something that's a little different than what it is that I'm describing. Yet that is oftentimes, sometimes how it starts out. We think the information that we're getting is coming from something outside of us, but in actuality, it's been coming from inside of us the whole time. That doesn't mean as channels, uh, which we all are, we're all plugging in to some source. That doesn't mean that we won't be hearing information through telepathy, which means it's coming from outside of us. And that's a, perhaps a completely different video. <laughs> My friend Jess is like, I have to get you maybe a t-shirt that says, oh, sorry, I got distracted or to be continued. I think another one would be, that's a separate topic or that's another video. It becomes more of a unification. It becomes less of a separation. And the more we work on ourselves, the more we recognize what is really truly part of ourselves. And that inner action then becomes the words that we use and things like that. Now, that doesn't mean that all of us are going to interpret that the same way. And it doesn't mean um, that we're all going to share the same messages in the same way. And right now I'm kind of referring to maybe people who are channelers or um, energy healers or tarot card readers that maybe dabble in this particular frequency. Oh, that in itself is such a topic, but I want to rein it back in and keep it simplified. Uh, keep it simple star seeds, right? And just kind of share that that does look different for all of us. It looks different because it is different. The way in which we interact with our guidance team is different for everyone. And so my call to share this information isn't like I have someone saying, you need to do this. It's a feeling that comes from within that then leads me to the appropriate words or, and even that is in that statement is a separation, but I'm just going to share this in this way so that I can basically show what it looks like in different applications. It might be that I see a picture and I go to the grocery store at a particular time because I was going to go home, but all of a sudden I saw a grocery store in my head and I thought, oh yes, I need something off of this list. I need lettuce. So I go to the grocery store, but in actuality, it might be that it wasn't just because it was my higher self reminding me of what I needed off of my list or my um, subconscious telling me, don't forget. It might also have been because at that exact moment, I then run into my neighbor who's really going through some struggling, you know, a struggle. We have an interaction and it shifts the energy between us and therefore we both walk away gaining something from that experience and that's just one example and that is synchronicity 
But then that leads me back into where does that synchronicity begin and where do we end? If we are in that flow, it just becomes a way of living, a way of interacting, a way of working. And so that's, I mean, even all of what I just said, I could take into so many different applications and so many different layers, subsets or bubbles. So the message that's been really strong for me this week has been let it go. Now that in itself, I played with because I thought, well, if I'm here to fulfill a mission, then how can I let that mission go? And I'll go back to what I was, I was actually just talking about a lot of different subjects. So I always invite anyone who's watching this or listening to this, fill in the blanks for your own application. This isn't necessarily just about those who feel that they're on a mission or those who feel like they have to complete this in this lifetime because that's what they came here to do. What, my, what I've been shown from tuning into this field that we all have access to is that my mission changes as I change because all of a sudden what was relevant for me to come here to do, I've already done it from one perspective, or I'm always in a constant process of completion. Therefore, everything that I came here to share and express is already being done. And so it is done. <laughs> um, as long as I'm staying in a place of flow. And for me, that's that heart brain connection, that centeredness. But that doesn't mean I'm always going to be in that constant state of flow because I have things that I am constantly interacting with that shift my perspective, that change my directive. Yet if I'm not being, um, if I'm centered, it doesn't pull me off course. But then to go back to the whole mission statement, my statement then changes and it brings it all back to just I am. <laughs> So this, there's a sense of just coming back into that oneness and that presence with what's happening in the now, rather than me focusing primarily on my mission. Focusing on my mission at hand, well, here are my hands. My hands are connected to my body. So theoretically, my body is the mission. And as I act and interact with my environment, I express and take action based on what I have in my hands at the moment. What do I have in my hands? My heart. Nothing is disconnected. Everything is connected. So it's just, I've been playing with that a lot and it is coming back to that sense of oneness. Let it go, let them go, let that go. What can I let go of? That I'm hanging on to. And it may not be, and I just want to clarify there, it doesn't mean that all of us are in that subset. We're not necessarily all in the bubble that I'm expressing through right now. Some people are really um, in this space of needing to know what their mission is because that's the state that they're in to find more about themselves, about ourselves about what that means for them, what it represents. And it might be that that individual is working on their own individual journey and they need that action statement in order to keep pushing themselves or allowing themselves to be pulled magnetized. So electrically stimulated towards something and magnetized and pulled something so that they can then interact with that in order to process, integrate, activate whatever it might be that is important for their own growth. So I really feel that it's important to come back and say that that is not wrong or right. And that is a beautiful place to be in. That isn't necessarily where I am expressing from in this now moment. So that can shift and change and more for all of us because my mission, I realize is I am. And as I operate from that space, which isn't always an easy space to operate from, yet at the other times, it's the easiest place to operate from because it is <laughs> what it is. 
So these are just some musings that I've had just to share from my perspective, how I come into these different states of awareness and the different states of awareness that I've had this week and ongoing. So letting go of the need to um, continue on a particular path or an ideology has been big this week for a lot of people that I've interacted with and worked with. Uh, and recognizing that sometimes the way that I teach doesn't necessarily mean that, that that's necessarily going to be useful for that individual. So sometimes the way I teach or share when I'm doing an energy session is to recognize their own way of, of utilizing what can be, I'm hearing adaptations. So everybody adapts in different ways. Some people use color for healing. Some people use sound. Some people use geometric shapes. My friend Jess and Candace and I were just talking about this. Some people use animal um, medicine, shamanic medicine. It's different for everyone. And I kind of just went off into a sub layer there. Okay. Maybe I'll just keep going here and I'll just do a separate video where I go into flow because I'm in flow. I'm just in a state of awareness and kind of communicating in this way. So when I say let it, it go, I was hearing let ego, let ego go, let it go. And it was ironic because my husband chose uh, Guardians of the Galaxy the other night, part two, for us to watch. And I was in resistance. I was working on some things. And as always, he's kind of an oracle for me, showing me what to focus on, what to see, synchronicities inadvertently in his own way and um the whole part two if you haven't seen guardians of the galaxy i'm a huge fan of movies because they hold so much juice and so many activations and so many different reflections um if we choose to see it as that and the planet in that movie is ego and it was just a really good it's just a great movie you know it's eating i'm not going to give you a spoiler alert if you haven't seen it it's just a good movie yes it's violent yes there's things in there that are um associated with certain belief systems that we may not agree with but that's where i come back to let it go <laughs> so part of that is letting it go sometimes we are unable to because it's still part of our ego but still part of an attachment that we have to something that we don't want to let go of. And it's okay to be in that space. It's not like, and I hear somebody saying, well, you can't let everything go. You would never get anywhere. You'd never get anything done. And that would be extreme. And that would be something to come back to. And I would invite anyone in that space to use our sense on that, use our sensibility, our ability to sense into, people call it common sense. I hear that as a play of words, co-man sense. So it's coming together with our human sense, right? It's common, I hear comma. So that's a continuation of our senses. So it's using all of our senses to, to see what, what is it that we're in a space of letting go of. That can be people, relationships, jobs, belief systems, beliefs about our body. And the biggest thing, though, that I'm seeing is a belief or an attachment to, um, boy, there's so much going on. I had a session once quite some time ago where uh, another healer had mentioned uh, something about me on my journey. And, it, and this is where we're really called when we're working with others, not to necessarily take everything that they say us as factual, because a healer, an intuitive, a channeler, whatever we're labeling as we do this, um, homeopathic, esoteric, whatever we want to label these healing modalities as, we're all still required to be our own source of authenticity. We're all 
being asked from one perspective to be our own authority. Use our senses to feel into if that is the entire and complete truth, because that other person we're working with only sees from what they have the ability to see. That doesn't make it wrong and it doesn't make it right, but it makes it an interpretation. So for example, when I'm doing a session with someone, I'm shown visions and pictures. I hear sounds and words and I'm guided to ask certain questions. And that is something also that I invite everyone who I've ever worked with and who I ever will work with to let it go. Sometimes those uh, interpretations are meant to invite us to ask questions. They are not the know-all be-all answer to what or the solution to our situation, problem, health issue, whatever it might be. And recognizing and coming back to our mission statements change, our interactions with these experience changes experiences change, play on words. So at the time when I worked with this healer and they told me, well, you are Andromedan. That changed part of my mission statement in that moment to myself. And therefore I shifted many of the, the things that I participated in based off of that piece of information. But all that did was validate something within me that I already knew, or sometimes we can have a session with someone and it validates something that we know that is an, not necessarily true. It might just be their interpretation of an energy that they're seeing. Why am I going into so much detail about this? Because it's so important that we don't base our healing or our reality on what somebody else is telling us that comes up over and over again and so it's beautiful to play in this way though because it can invite us to ask the questions we need to heal ourselves if someone tells us something and we say no that does not resonate with me great that is one answer or validation that we've had to something that we needed an answer to <laughs> And it may be that it's something that might resonate with us later on. So these are all things to play with because it is about us. Um, my friend Candace and I talked about this um, maturity. She was talking about the gene keys. We're coming from immaturity. And what is the opposite of that? Maturity. But sometimes we have, we have to go within and we have to do our own inner work to have our own experience for the fruit to ripen so that we can then digest it, right? If it's too soon, it's not ripe enough. It can cause a stomach ache. If it's too ripe, then it's rotten and it holds bacteria that isn't necessarily good for our bodies. So this is relevant because um, some of the fruit that we've been feeding ourselves <laughs> is rotted on the vine. It may have held a deliciousness at one stage of our awareness. And now all, and it, and it may have held valuable nutrients, but now it's time to trim the fruit and it's time to harvest and plant new seeds. And we're in this stage of awareness uh, from my perspective that we're continually planting new seeds and we're continually harvesting. So we're just being called to let some of that stuff go, especially about belief systems, about ourselves. And I'm using healing modalities just because I work in that field, right? But it might be about religion. It might be about mathematics. It might be about certain um things that we've been told about how our reality exists, the way the earth looks. 
And I will go into that perhaps in another video on, on factual things are only factual until we get new information. And that could change the entire fact. Now, granted, two plus two is four. And there's certainly this idea that certain facts are changing. I'm not, um, again, common sense. That doesn't mean two plus two is five, but it do means it do. Oh, I'm hearing so many different things right now. I'm seeing a reference to do and how everything is held within that drop of do. I'm hearing golden mean. That means our relationship with the numbers changes. That means our relationship with what two plus two means changes. And then we can adapt from there the other mathematical equations that are processed around the definition of what four holds. And I know I just went off into like a little bit of a tangent there, but that's the information from another perspective. So when I say I'm guided to or my guidance team is sharing or I'm hearing, or I feel the call. It's something that is innate within me. It's a resource that I'm utilizing. So everybody's in different stages. And some people are just at that stage where they, you know, and they might always be in that stage. By the way, stage doesn't mean a hierarchy. That's just what the platform that they're operating from. And that really works for them. There are some people that are shifting or rotating that stage to see different things. And so they're going to possibly be changing their direction. They might be changing their mission statement. So the question becomes, are we attached to who they were? Are we attached to our idea of what they should be speaking about, how they should be speaking? And that is a direct reflection and our relationship with them. Um, and that is a direct reflection showing up for us. Where are we not letting things go? Is that an ego attachment? Is that an attachment to a belief? It doesn't, it's not all about ego either. It's not all about shadow. Sometimes it's just about awareness. Awareness of the ego, awareness of the shadow, but more than that, it's about our experience with, and again, I'm being called, so I say this because part of me is sharing that as a tool. When I say I'm being called, it's like I'm recognizing, let's repeat that and go into that a little deeper, so I'm going to. We're, we're looking at something and sometimes we're attached to, oh, that's ego. Oh, that's my shadow coming up again. And it's more than that. It's more about our conceptualization, the package that we put a shadow in. What does a shadow look like to us? Ugly, dark, lower reality. Yet on the brightest days when we're outside is when we have the biggest shadow. So recognizing that, how am I holding on to this, let's say, partner or relationship or idea? I have to stay in this particular job because it will look bad if I leave. I will have been a disappointment to my family. I will be disappointing myself. Who is the self that we are disappointing? And it might be just by us coming into acceptance of that recognition or realization that we all of a sudden become okay with the job. And we recognize that the resistance we had to the job was really because of a resistance we had around ourselves and our attachment to the what ifs around that job. And all of a sudden by us becoming present, the job becomes more enjoyable. The relationship becomes more enjoyable, enjoyable, enjoy. Because we have these ahas where all of a sudden we're like, 
actually, it doesn't matter. I'm letting go of that expectation that I have that I need to be at this stage, at this time of my life. I need to have this person in my life. I need to have three children and they need to have these names. I'm just using these all as examples because our mission then changes in that moment. And again, it becomes less of a mission, a forcefulness, and we become the force because we are the Jedi. We're no longer fighting that. We're just moving through it and everything else then magnetizes or is repelled from us based on the force that we're utilizing as we move through our reality. If that makes sense. Well, I just rolled right into it. Uh, fun. So. I know I kind of use a lot of word stuff to play with, but because my intention when I share these videos is that certain things will ping in, in whoever I'm sharing this with their map. And everybody's map is someplace different. It holds different memories. It's attached to different realities. It's attached to different galactic places and spaces in the universe. And that's the beauty of being here on Earth. We are a part of the solar system. We are the scientists and mathematicians and cosmologists and cosmetologists. <laughs> and um, English professors, language, linguistic anal analysis. I could go into so many different different layers. We're all things, right? We're all these jobs or these missions here. And that's, it's okay if that changes for us. Now, now, now. Okay. Actually, I think I'm going to end on that note. I feel pretty uh, complete with that little share. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to do a separate video where I just stay in flow in a different way, a different style. I am being guided <laughs> to say that that flow does look different for me. Sometimes I'm, duh, 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 sometimes I'm, ooh, my very scientific explanations of the vibration that I'm at. Neither one of those are different necessarily vibrations. Uh, let me rephrase that. They're both obviously different vibrations based on how I'm communicating, but that doesn't mean that I'm still not in the space of a heart-centered awareness. It just might be my expression comes out in a different frequency or vibration. That's something also to recognize. Um, we're not always going to stay this monotonous one line, right? We're, we're meant to oscillate. We're meant to move up and down a little bit and change and adjust and feel into and respond and sense and embody because that's what our system is always adapting to. And that's part of the experience. All right, in love and light guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Namaste.